Hey guys, we're outside today and uh, get a little cooler now, so it's time to fire up our little outdoor furnace here. Last year you saw me forge a knife and now I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Today I'm going to cast a, a large mushroom that I found in the woods and we're going to cast it in aluminum. This should be pretty cool. I hope it works out. Stay tuned. So I want to show you this setup. I don't think we had this one last year to show you guys. This is the furnace part of our setup that's going to heat up the aluminum. Basically it's a metal garbage can on the outside. This part is made of a mixture of vermiculite and plaster of Paris. That's our insulating layer. Inside you'll see that there is a graphite crucible. If you're interested you can buy one of those on Amazon. And here what I've taken out of the crucible are little pucks of aluminum. So basically you can melt down pop cans, other pieces of aluminum and you know do a pour into a muffin tin and that's why it has a shape of a muffin. Here's another example. This is just a, a bar of aluminum that was previously poured and poured into a mold. So we've got about three of those little muffins of aluminum and one bar. I'll rearrange that in a second. What we also have, it's attached to a propane tank. Last year uh, I used charcoal when I was uh, firing up the forge to make the knife. So this is a faster, cleaner, and cheaper setup than using, I was going through bags and bags of the, the charcoal before. So here's a small propane tank. So here we have the connection to the tank, which has a, a high pressure valve that you can adjust the gas flow right here. Goes all the way through to a venturi burner, so oxygen gets sucked through in here along with the gas, and the heat comes in right there. So we'll get a pretty, nice hot flame in there and we'll be able to heat up this aluminum in no time. Here's the form where we'll be casting the mushroom. So essentially it's just a wooden box. Uh, it's quite large for the mushroom that I'm creating so um, we just put some scrap wood in to kind of just narrow down the space there a little bit. And uh, it's just basically made out of uh, three quarter inch plywood. You can see the depth on it right there. So essentially we're going to be using green sand to fill the form. Green sand is made of clay, water, and sand, and that will pack around the mushroom. And then when we pour in the aluminum, the mushroom will burn away, leaving the aluminum in place. And then we'll crumble the sand away, and theoretically, we'll have a mushroom exactly in the shape of what we found in the woods. All right, let's light her up. Oh. That is really hot. Woo. I don't want to put the camera too close to it because it is really scorching hot. Now we're going to put the crucible in. Safety first. All right, now we'll put the lid on. So here's the mushroom. I actually froze it a bit so it wouldn't be mushy for this project. As you can see, it's a bolete mushroom. It has the pores on the bottom of it. Very long stem there, and this has got a little bit of frost uh, on the top of it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in the box here after we cover it in some talcum powder. Um, talcum powder is gonna help us pick up, or an attempt to pick up rather, the small details that you can see on the stem and uh, underneath the cap. So we'll dust it in Johnson & Johnson's baby powder or the talcum powder of your choice and then we'll pack sand around it and then put a couple of ports for um, sort of gases to come out when we pour the hot aluminum. So first I'm just gonna scrape out a little bit of a spot because I'm gonna want a little bowl that's gonna capture the uh, aluminum and I'm just gonna do it right over where the mushroom is. All right, so that'll hold a fair bit there. Now I'm just gonna uh, make a connection, like a little tube between the mushroom and uh, the well. And I'm gonna pull out. Okay, so I'm gonna take the lid off and we'll see if the aluminum's melted. I've let the, the furnace here go while we were getting So I've taken the 
lid off and you can see that the aluminum is melted there. It's extremely hot right now. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of that uh, crusty aluminum off the top and uh, then we'll see the real aluminum that we want to use for our project underneath. a coordinated effort bringing uh, the aluminum over. My voice is muffled, it's because I'm wearing a mask. So I'm not sure that worked very well. I don't think my one tube contacted the mushroom. Oh boy, we'll see what happened. All right, so we managed to scoop off uh, some of the uh, aluminum from the top there. Not convinced this actually worked. So, well, we'll see. It's the first attempt ever, uh, so we'll see. Oh man, mushroom did burn. Ah, it's a pile of mush. Oh, that's disgusting. Oh, smells terrible. It's gonna show you in there, it didn't actually burn away the mushroom. Um, right in there, uh, you can see this brown, horrible smelling mushroom. So I think that, uh, I don't know, I gotta figure out another way to do this because it looks like the mushroom really didn't melt. Kind of cooked it a little bit, liquefied it, but ooh, sure didn't turn into an aluminum, beautiful mushroom cast. So I'm gonna take a look. Let's go in and see the damage. So. Bang away some of this uh, green sand. Oh, the smell is horrendous. I don't know. Sort of almost looks like the stem, but that's just me. Well, I don't know. Kind of looks like a mushroom. So this is where the aluminum sort of hit the mushroom, and looks like it did not actually expand to go into the mushroom. It's hilarious because it looks like there's the mushroom cap here with a stem, but it's not what we were looking for today. Bummer. So yeah, there's our uh, toasty little mushroom. It's the cap where I'd bored through. It seems like it kind of dried it a bit, but didn't do anything. Let's see where the stem is somewhere in here. Maybe that's it right there, maybe? No. Little bits of it. Well, that was a disappointment. Don't quite know what went wrong there, whether the bolete was just too thick, too, too moist um, for the aluminum to melt it. It seemed like the aluminum poured right in there and then it just kind of dried it out a little bit. So anyway, made a horrible smell. Thank goodness you guys <laughs> couldn't smell that. That was ridiculous. I'll never want to eat a bolete ever. Um, Anyways, got to go back to the field, probably go do some foraging tomorrow, grab a few other nice specimens, maybe experiment with different varieties. Uh, maybe the bolete's just a little bit too tough, too, too thick, too, uh, and the aluminum just cools it down too quickly. Uh, maybe I should dry the mushrooms ahead of time. I'll do a couple of experiments and we'll see what happens. Stay tuned. Well, this is take two. Uh, I've gone out and done a little bit more foraging and I have a wonderful collection of some very interestingly shaped mushrooms. And I'm gonna try a different method today. I looked online, did a little bit more research, and definitely the moisture in the mushrooms is an issue for you know, the perfect casting of a mushroom in aluminum. So what I'm gonna do is a method I've seen done by Ant Hill Art and by others, where you basically make a plaster of Paris um, cast of the mushroom. We'll basically end up putting the plaster of Paris cast in the oven um, and heating up all the moisture out of it. And in the process, basically cooking the mushroom burning it and burning it away basically so that we ha now have a hollow cavity in the exact shape of the mushroom. Then we'll pour our aluminum in there. Let me give you a close-up of the really cool mushrooms I found today for the project and my new pile of materials. So you can see all the various interesting mushrooms I have there. Lots of different shapes which I wanted to explore. So there's the black tooth fungus, very cool, kind of looks like the hedgehog that I've shown you, only it's black with the little teeth 
under the cap. Got some boletes here. Another type of uh, bolete mushroom, I believe. This one's really cool. This one I'm really excited about. Um, look at the shape on that. This is called the apricot jelly mushroom. And it's really gelatinous actually when you open it up, but it's not gonna be a cool shape if this works out. There's another little guy of those. And then some various assortment of mushrooms here, which I haven't chosen to identify, but have some very interesting shapes to them. So I think they'll be great to cast as well. For the materials, I have, um, this is what we're gonna pour the plaster of Paris into and suspend the mushroom from the top of the cup. So some smaller cups for the smaller mushrooms, some bigger beer cups for the others. We've got some wire, wire snips, stir sticks, plaster of Paris. I also have a big bag of it offset here and then just something to mix our plaster of Paris in. All right, so we'll get started with mixing the plaster of Paris. And then um, what I'll do is I'll pour some of the plaster of Paris in the cups and then we'll suspend the mushroom in the plaster of Paris and put the plaster of Paris all the way around to the very sort of base of the stem of the mushroom. Well, the first step is to mix the plaster of Paris. And then what we'll do is pour it into the individual cups, put a bit in there, obviously, then the mushroom goes in and then more plaster of Paris to cover the entire mushroom. Let's get started. Before I get started, I'm actually going to get the mushrooms prepared because we'll have to move pretty quickly once the plaster of Paris has been mixed, about six to 10 minutes before it tries to set. So I wanna um, basically use this wire. I'm gonna kind of suspend them in the cups like that. Now this guy's probably gonna go in a bigger container, but you get the idea. They'll be suspended so the plaster of Paris uh, fills up to the top and they're sitting nicely within the, within the compound. In like that. There we go. Good. I just want to scrape a little bit away here from the stem because this is where we're going to have a hole to pour the um, aluminum. I can brush away. This is a very thin layer of plaster, it's no big deal. But I'll just leave that part of the stem exposed there. Perfect. They're all poured, the little guys in the small cups and the bigger ones are in beer cups. And I only had two I had to have a different setup for the bolete and there was another large mushroom in here. So I'm gonna let them continue to set. Next step is to take them inside, remove the plastic or cardboard box from around the plaster of Paris mold and uh, then we're going to stick them in the oven. This is all an experiment, not really sure how high to set the temperature, but basically I have to remove all of the moisture from the plaster of Paris and basically cook, burn, and turn the mushroom into ash and get rid of it. So probably going to set it uh, fairly high and uh, let it cook for a while and then maybe vacuum out the, the mushroom ash after. We'll see how this goes. It's all a big experiment. So these have been sitting in the oven at about 500 Fahrenheit for many hours. Now I've let them cool down. I'm just going to take one out to show you. Oh, this is probably a better example over here. So you can see the mushroom is essentially cooked inside of here. Now I can't be for sure with some of the thicker ones um, if they're completely dried out and there's some moisture there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of these actually just for a little while in the really hot forge furnace outside and just burn the rest of this out of there and then we'll probably vacuum it out and then we're gonna have a spot to pour the aluminum to get our mushroom so i'm gonna do three today in this pour so i've got them in there just uh, i'm gonna burn out the last little bit of mushroom so let's get the uh, burner started up so i'm gonna set them up inside this little pot here, some sand, just to give it a little bit more support when I do the actual pour. So you can see they weathered the extra heating really well, a little bit of uh, superficial external cracks. And you can see the mushroom is pretty well burnt out. It's kind of glowing hot in there, but uh, there's nothing much in there. Whew. Oh yeah. Perfect, so I just want to show you this little tiny white blob down here that fell out 
is uh, there's that mushroom. It is just ash. That's what you want. Now we have a perfect mold of that mushroom. All right, so I've got the plaster mold buried in some sand. I've got a little bit of space here at the top so that it's a well so when we pour in the aluminum um, it'll be funneled into the mold. And any excess I'm going to put in this little uh, muffin tin here to make little aluminum pucks for next time. Let's do this. Oh, that was fun. Oh, brother, what a mess. So things happen, you just gotta roll with it. So I'm just gonna sit here for a bit, let it cool, and then uh, we'll crack it open and see what we have. All right, so here I am with the three pours I did today. And as you can see, got a lot of excess uh, aluminum, a lot of excess aluminum here on the top. And there's a little bit of a spill actually around the side. Um, so another time I'd probably pack the sand a little bit tighter, maybe use a stick to really compact it, but it may actually make a really cool kind of scene. Um, if I don't like it, I'm just going to cut off the excess pieces of aluminum. It's no big deal. So a few of them, whoo, don't need that. Um, a few of them uh, had that little excess bit of aluminum. This one I ended up having to tape together because the mold kind of crumbled as it dried. Um, so just to show you, you can, you can tape it, no big deal. All right, so these are still pretty hot. You could probably dunk them in a bunch of water just to kind of cool them down really quickly, but I think it's gonna make a bit of a mess with the plaster. So I'm just gonna crack these <laughs> like one would crack one of those dino eggs to see what's inside. So it's pretty cool. I have no idea what uh, each mushroom is gonna look like. Can't remember once they're all in there, they all look the same to me. So it's actually gonna be a little bit of a surprise to see what we get. All right, got my safety goggles on and let's see. Oh, yeah, this is awesome. Holy mackerel. You can be pretty vigorous. You're not going to hurt anything. This is cool. Oh my gosh, guys, this is amazing. Whoa, look at that. Of course, too much excess aluminum here, but the mushroom turned out awesome. Wow. <laughs> Guess I should wear a mask. Woohoo. They're gonna be little picks to get in farther, but look at that, there's our little mushroom. Look at, isn't that cool? That turned out so good. So there's a little close up of it. The shape was preserved perfectly. I think what I'll do, I will end up cutting off this excess piece of aluminum here. And I might just soak this in water to get the rest of the plaster out of the fine detail. Now this is one of the little ones. Oh, yes, that turned out great too. Here's a close up of that one. Beautiful. Let's work on this one. Oh, this one turned out great. Don't know if you can see inside, but there's one of those little um, black tooth mushrooms and it's got the little tiny one underneath there. So next I'm going to uh, basically just clean this up a bit and take off the excess aluminum and show you the mushrooms up close. There they are, all nice and cleaned up. I've left them on their bases for now. And I'll probably cut the aluminum off a little bit more. I might make some keychains. I'm not really sure how I'm going to set them up, but these are really cool. You can't see from this point of view, but you can see all the gill detail, all the cap details. Plaster of Paris method is amazing, highly recommended. It works really well. There's a fungus with a little baby one coming up on the side, like I showed you earlier before I cast them. It retained all that detail. Even the moss and sort of the mud that was attached to the 
mushroom was preserved there. Here's a small bolete. It turned out really well. I can't wait to do the larger ones and see how they look. They'll be amazing. Well, I couldn't be happier with the pour and how things worked out. Well, except for the fact I dumped a whole bunch of aluminum, but uh, no worries. We can salvage that and melt it down for uh, the next projects. So certainly I've got a few more mushrooms to, uh, to create and I'll need to melt down a lot more aluminum, especially for the, the large bolete that I have and a few other the large mushrooms. I'll keep you posted on my social media as to how uh, the rest of the pours went, as well as what I decide to do with the ones I have today. So don't forget, you can follow me on Facebook, on my Wild Yam Facebook page, Twitter, and now Instagram. So I'm gonna put the links down below in the description box, and uh, we'll see you online. Have a great week as always, guys. Take care.